spend all this time inside uh, raising ferrets and cleaning up poop and all the other things. It's really rewarding to come out on the prairie in the evening like this and see the animals in their natural habitat. Today's ferrets have all just finished their preconditioning period. Um, it's about 30 days out in the pens. They've learned to live in burrows, eat prairie dogs, become accustomed to the weather patterns and sounds and sights of living on the prairie. They all passed and so now they're ready to be released. Historically, they really didn't know how many black-footed ferrets were in the wild at the turn of the century. About 98% of the uh, Great Plains had been plowed up by that point, so habitat was lost. Then in 1979, they were actually declared extinct. And in 1981, they were rediscovered in Matitsi, Wyoming. So a captive breeding program was started in about 1985 to bring back the species from extinction. It's a great program. We bring in state agencies and uh, tribes to help us reintroduce the ferret once we've raised them in captivity. All the animals that are destined for release or even kept in the breeding program need to, you know, pass medical evaluations. They, you know, have to have both canines intact. They have to be, you know, eyes in good condition. They need to be at a healthy weight. At a gross level, they need to be in good enough condition that, you know, given the environmental challenges they're going to face, that they stand a good chance of survival. All of the ferrets that are released into the wild are vaccinated for distemper, and they're vaccinated for rabies, and they're vaccinated for plague. One of the things other than human encroachment and agriculture that reduced their population so significantly was probably canine distemper and also bubonic plague or what they call sylvatic plague. Since they are so uniquely sensitive to canine distemper, we worry um, that if we send them out unvaccinated, that we'll lose them before they have a chance to reproduce. Well, the city of Fort Collins owns two large parcels. We bought the parcels for a variety of reasons, but it included three to 4,000 acres of prairie dogs that occur here. And as part of our management efforts, we always wanted to bring ferrets back to this landscape. This is truly a voluntary incentive-based uh, opportunity whereby landowners are paid for the habitat that they are allowing us to use for the recovery of these mammals. The landowners do understand this ecosystem. That's what they make their living off of. All we have to do is explain that the only piece that is missing out of this wonderful ecosystem that they have is one of the top level carnivores and that's what we're releasing here today. They've been habituated in outside pens, but this is still a new experience for them because it's wide open without any fences. We have a good home for ferrets to go. We were at zero ferrets, and now this landscape has 42 ferrets on it, which is the first time in a long time that's occurred. Well, we're lucky to have this unique species, and we almost didn't have them. Yeah, boy. Oh well done. Oh, we so, so if we can do anything to hedge our bets, and keep them alive out in the wild and let them prosper. I think that's worth doing.